Welcome to this reactor startup tutorial for nuclear areas. We're in the control room, so let's get right into it. First, we need to switch on the eight control consoles that are located around the desk. I'm showing this in real time, so you know where they all are. If you want to skip this sequence, just skip ahead to 34 seconds. First, on the fuel panel, set the operation mode to nominal. New operating mode established. Nominal mode. On that same panel, click insert in core to insert the fuel. On the pressurizer panel, switch on the heaters and check the heating power is set to high. On the coolant system panel, set the flow to medium, switch on the third circulation pump and switch on all of the coolant loading pumps. Coolant has started to circulate. On the condenser panel, set the flow to fast and now switch on the pumps. While we're waiting for the pressure to increase, we'll bring up the iPad and we'll grab a loan of credits from the bank because this will make automation much, much easier. To automate the basic operation and maintenance of the plant once it's started, we're going to buy some abilities for our AI assistant. That's the ability to control the pressurizer, the control rods, and perform as much maintenance as possible. On the pressurizer panel, once pressure and temperature are in the green range, switch the heating power to low to maintain that. On the coolant system panel, you can now switch off the coolant load pumps. On the reactor core panel, it's now time to start removing the control rods and start the reaction. While we're waiting for the reaction to start on the energy generation panel, switch on the resistor bank. Switch on the turbine compensator or governor and set the turbine bypass to 33% initially so we don't burn out the resistors once the reaction starts. Once the reaction started on the steam generator panel, set the flow to medium and switch on pump number 3. On the pressurizer panel, switch off the heater. On the internal supply panel, you'll notice the plant is still operating from generator power. On the energy generation panel, once we're generating over 150 kilowatts, we can switch off that generator and rely on power from the reactor. Once the reactor internal temperature reaches around 250 degrees, the reaction is stable enough that we can call in our AI assistant to handle it while we do some other stuff. I am taking control of the pressurizer. The assistant will maintain the reaction as it currently is. It's now time to open the iPad and request that we start feeding power to the grid. After a short while, you'll get a confirmation of that start time. When the start time arrives, under the bus column of the energy generation panel, you will see the demand from the grid. Heading down to the synchroscope, you see the red dot around the outside? We're going to raise and lower the turbine RPM to bring that into the centre. When it's centred, you'll see two green dots. Once you see that, close the breaker. We can now reduce the turbine bypass to zero as most of our energy is now being fed to the grid. So looking at the energy generation panel, in the left column we can see the energy we're producing, 7000 kilowatt. On the right, the grid is demanding 6000 kilowatt. So where's the difference going? Into the resistor banks, which can hold 5000 kilowatt. Currently we're putting 1300 into them. And that's it, you've successfully started the reactor. From this point on, the AI should comfortably maintain the output. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this useful. Take care, and I'll see you next time.